This is the song I will call I'm a boy with no hair. And after that, I'm going to sing Walking This Life by me. My name is Devin Sweeney. Fucking light up, piece of shit. shit. Need a light, Dev? Use this, it's torch. Torch, Dev. Use that. There you go. Oh, fuck, have it on a... It's not even lit, buddy, it's not even lit. Here, for fuck's sake, ready? There you go. And I'm fucking pissed off at my fucking wannabe fucking friend, Dougie Blaze. He, uh, he took my iPod Touch from me and he sold it to some fucking crack bitch in Hampton for Molly because now Dougie is addicted to the Molly drug and now he's popping pills because he's a fucking waste man. This is Devin, a YouTuber with over 18,000 subscribers. He makes content fairly regularly and seems to have some pretty thick skin. Now, if at this point you're wondering if something is off or if he's a troll, you're not alone. Devin is a prime example of troll-like behavior. Violent outbursts. Honestly, I want to grab a fucking knife and cut him up in little pieces and feed the body parts to an animal. Oh, I fucking hate this house. Racism. Coffee, you fucking packy piece of shit. And some pretty wild claims. I'm a two-time cancer survivor. So he can't be serious, right? Well, what a lot of people don't understand is the simple explanation for his mannerisms. He has Fetal Alcohol Syndrome, or FAS. This condition causes him to function at the level of a 9-year-old while being exposed and corrupt by all the things going on around him. All I want to do is help people get through cancer and help them get through it like I did. Because I'm a two-time cancer survivor and if I see someone who has cancer, I want to do everything in my power to give them motivation to fight and not give up and don't give in to death like I didn't. Actually, this is one of the only claims he's made that we can prove easily. Devin did in fact have cancer, at least once, and after stumbling across a Kiwi farm forum on him, I was led to a couple of links that are about as far from coincidence as you can get. Devin often alludes to his town of residence, Hamilton, Ontario, which happens to be the same town that hosted a benefit for Devin in 2009. A later article outlines Devin's parents' thoughts on his treatment, stating it wrecked his mind and body. The article also mentions Devin's fetal alcohol syndrome and simultaneously proves some of Devin's claims that he's been in run-ins with the law, including a charge of arson. And the police came and it was going to charge me with arson. Thank God they didn't that day. But then I did get charged for arson. Because after, after a while, uh, the police kept coming to the house over putting holes in the wall, not listening, and doing other shit. Now most of these articles outline something that makes Devin's cancer story somewhat controversial. Remember his parents speaking out against his chemotherapy? Well in 2008, Devin was forced into treatment. He and his parents wanted to find an alternative method, but due to his fetal alcohol syndrome, the decision was placed in the hands of a judge. This made local news, and about a year later, when Devin had undergone treatment, it became clear that without chemo, Devin would most likely be dead. Devin did not lie about having cancer, and plenty of people seem to know this, and yet they still bandwagon and leave hate on his channel. You all are sick motherfuckers. He has a point. Devin has 18,000 subscribers because one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube as of right now has made four videos on him. Leafy's Here's audience is undoubtedly one of the most vicious fan bases on this site, and when Leafy uploads a new video, his subject is almost immediately bombarded with hate, and Devin is a prime example. Now it's arguable whether the majority of Leafy's targets are equipped to defend themselves or not, but as this controversy over the last couple of months has shown, making videos on people with mental disabilities isn't the best idea for his channel. That said, Devin is mentally challenged, yet no one has made any fuss over these videos being made whatsoever, and there are four of them. There were only one video each on Tommy NC 2010 and what movie won, and people freaked out. The Leafy Hate bandwagon was almost more saturated than the hate on the subject's channels, so why did Devin go unnoticed? The videos on them were uploaded before and after this controversy, but the problem isn't Leafy making videos, and I don't want to talk about whether or not he's a cyberbully. The real problem is his rabid fans. The utter lack of sensitivity is astonishing. 
There's proof that Devin had cancer, but they still tell him to get cancer. There's proof that he's tried to commit suicide and they still tell him to kill himself. And most of the comments are just simply hiss. This is the branding mark of a Leafy fanboy, and possibly the worst thing for Leafy as it proves that he unintentionally ruins these channels just by making videos on them. And I don't want to bring in the free speech aspect. Devin just simply isn't mentally capable of handling these comments. I met up with this Muslim guy who had a big funny purple hat on. He asked me what my name was. I told him simply, it was Devin. And they're like, oh, you're really cute, Devin. And I'm like, fuck off, you, you fucking packy piece of shit. Go back to fucking your country and go fuck off. I told him that. I told him to fuck right off. He's like, fuck on, you get better results, baby. I'm like, I'm not a fucking hooker yet. Just to get this out of the way, this section will have parts that could be misconstrued as accusations, but are in fact just ideas that other people might have while watching this. Also, these next few claims are much harder to prove, but please keep this in mind. Devin hasn't lied this far. Why would he now? As well as being taken advantage of over the internet for a joke and bad taste or for a couple of views on a video making fun of him, Devin also gets taken advantage of in real life as well. Now just for some context, Devin's mom died of cancer a couple months after he was born. His dad is remarried and his stepmom has been the one supporting him through this very public chemo ordeal. Do you know what your dad told me? What? Your dad told me that one time he came home and you locked yourself into his house. Yep. And you were screaming, <laughs> saying you were fighting your dead mom, and you were smashing your head. Oh shit! Oh my and you god! Were throwing I was. yourself around. I was. I was like, <laughs> you broke a lot of shit. I did. So you had to call and like. I four did. Paramedics. Oh my god! It was. It was a sad day. Two police officers. Yep. Um, two tranquilizers. Yep. <laughs> But at least he would still put me in there. He stressed me out. He stressed me the fuck out. He looked at these bags now. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to eat all because of that cunt. This girl is Alyssa, Devin's best friend. He mentions going to her house and smoking weed quite frequently. What I don't understand, however, is why she would bring this up and laugh about it. And Devin is laughing along with her, so I can only assume he is high. But other than the fact that they are laughing about what sounds like an extremely traumatic experience, this just proves that his mother is in fact dead. Now this is the first video uploaded to Devin's channel in a while, and it seems that instead of Devin filming himself, Alyssa is now filming him and telling him what to talk about. I'm not going to make any accusations or anything, but one could look at this and see it as his friend exploiting his popularity to her advantage. That's not necessarily my opinion, but it could be someone else's. Moving on. In 2008 and 2009, there was a lot of local news coverage surrounding Devin's unique situation and being forced into chemotherapy. Devin was in an extremely bad state at the time and news sites had a field day. Many dramatic statements were made that may or may not be true, but the way I see it, the local news saw an opportunity to report on a poor sick boy getting treatment against his will, and if they published the pity story, they would receive a lot of attention. This might not be the case, but just for the sake of pointing out possible exploitation, think about this. The local media posted an article about how Devin cannot share his story using media. Also, there are some statements that would definitely receive attention and pity, if used correctly. with this random guy and I asked him if he wanted a five dollar blowjob and he said sure and then I gave him a blowjob obviously and then he said oh I would give you ten bucks you let me fuck your ass so then he took me in the bushes like down from Melissa's house and he fucked a little shit over me and it hurt and now I'm not a virgin and the shitty thing is he never ever gave me ten dollars Okay, so even given the fact that Devin did technically consent, and even given the fact that Devin is 18, making him of legal age of consent, this is just an awful situation in every sense, and I'm not even sure who's really at fault here. Devin did present the offer and consent, 
but the guy didn't give him the money he promised, and it is possible that he couldn't tell Devin is mentally challenged, but it's barely obvious. And even though the guy took advantage of him, Devin can't press charges or report him or anything, because Devin was technically acting as a prostitute, and would also get in trouble for this situation occurring. So it happened, and Devin just has to accept the fact that he lost his virginity because he was taken advantage of, and he can't do anything about it. It's just so awful, and I don't even know whether to feel bad for Devin or not. It was partially his fault. Devin is an extremely easy target. This is why I get screwed over so much in real life, and why he gets so much continuous hate over the internet. Now the fact is that Devin won't do much to defend himself, but do you really want to be the guy who took advantage of the fetal alcohol syndrome kid who got cancer twice and was publicly paraded around by the media? The kid who gets used and exploited regularly in his everyday life? The kid who just wanted to make videos and ended up being one of the easiest targets on the internet? Do you really want to be that guy? If so, go for it. But if Tommy NC 2010 has taught us anything, it's that it won't end up well for you when it goes public. And Devin is not the only one. See, my dad is a filthy pig. He wanted me to make a YouTube video of me playing with some toy he got me. I was like, uh, no, I'm not even doing that. Not even on your birthday, sweetheart.